Hudza, uh, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. Last time, we basically started the game. And today, we're off to find Marl and see where she disappeared off to. But first, let's check out these houses and see what we can buy. Oh, well, I didn't really see a window, so whatever. A dark gun, huh? So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell the wood sword here. Because we don't really need that anymore. We don't need this either. So, right off the get go, we're already pretty well equipped. <laughs> Magus. I just came here to save a girl. <laughs> I was about to restart the video from here, but I'm like, eh, let's just keep going and see how the rest of this session turns out. I'm so overly critical of my Let's Plays, too. It's like, one, like, big flub is enough for me to, like, go back and redo everything. And that's, like, a habit I probably should either kill or be a lot less excessive about. <laughs> huh, well that explains everything then. So we went back in time apparently. That's a pretty interesting phenomena. And yeah, see right there, it says 600 AD right in the bottom left there. So yeah, I guess if you forget the year you're in, just look to the bottom left. Talk to the townsfolk. Queen Lane wandering in the wandering around the forest, huh? Yeah, sure. Oh wow, that's the first, fastest I've ever seen an NPC move. <laughs> Huh. Okay, I guess you'll just ignore me then. Yeah, that is very Ted Woosley-ish looking text right there. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is about, like, Ted Woosley, but he's... Been known to like exaggerate words by either capitalizing it or making really cheesy like uh, insults like this. <laughs> hmm. Guess we can't open that till later, I suppose. I love how everyone here wears pretty much the same clothing they did back in our present time. Luca's descendants? Or ancestors, perhaps? Quite possibly. Okay, so that's the Xenan Bridge. I guess we'll check that out later. And there's a cathedral right here, but we're not gonna check that out until later. Let's head into the woods. Or the Guardia Forest, as it's so impromptly called. Wanna take care to not waste too much of our MP. In fact, we probably should have slept up at the end, now that I think about it. <laughs> Ow. Hmm. 
So yeah, that's another thing too. If you ever see sparklies like lying on the ground, well, you might want to pick it up. So I'm just gonna wait till these guys get into formation or something. Okay, there we go. Let's give them a good what's for. So yeah, unlike the Final Fantasy games, in this game, uh, you run into enemies that are actually visible on the map. Well, not this map, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, no longer do you have to worry about random encounters, which is a good thing. I'm, I've never really been a fan of random encounters in the first place, to be honest with you. That being said though, there are times where you are going to run into a situation where you can't avoid enemies at all, depending on the path you're taking. Oh wow, ends are cheaper in this game than I remember. Alright, so now that we're all good to go, Let's head back to the forest. I want to see if there's anything worth uh, looking for behind these trees. Oh boy, we gotta fight these guys again. Fun! Don't worry about too much about wasting MP here though. This place is pretty short. As you'll see here soon enough. And we already got a level up too. See there, we got a power tab, which, strangely enough, wasn't there when I first came in to this very spot, so that's kind of odd. So what power tabs do is that you select them on the item screen here, and they'll permanently uh, boost your strength. So it's best to, like, hold out on those and wait till you find a party member you feel like really needs it, or is basically built around attack power. So I can tell you right now, one of the party members we run into, uh, we won't be seeing for a while, after uh, we see him shortly. And then uh, another one isn't so much uh, physical base, but more or less like magic uh, base. So uh, we're just gonna put the power tab over to Chrono here. Because why not? We could use the extra attack power. Oh, wow. Screeching hurts me, apparently. So, uh, like Golden Sun, I don't plan to leave all of these battles in. I do want to show off as much enemies as I possibly can. Not if it's going to end up killing me, though, if I'm going to sit here and wait on all of these. But, uh, if I feel like I'm running into an excessive amount of battles, then I will start cutting. So yeah, I'm kind of letting myself get beat up here. Which is no bueno. Should probably do something about that. We got plenty of tonics to spare, so uh, not too worried about wasting them off. Because we'll be running into more than enough of those later. <laughs> Thank you. 
Get your rolly butts out of here. Dang. The active time bar in this game is a lot faster than I remember it being. Like, it's so hit and miss in some games. Like, some games it's either pretty fast, or in other games it's, like, really slow. Like, it's pretty slow in Final Fantasy VI from what I remember. And it's always kind of bugged me, too. Like, ugh. Dead in the head. With a convenient chest in the end that plays mysterious music. I wonder what's up with that. Ah, oh, Guardia Castle. Eh, you know, just... Here to find a missing girl, I guess. What? That's kind of a weird insult to make. But like, I have Dragon Ball Z-esque hair. That makes me automatically cool, right? Oh yeah, that's another thing I should mention. Like, the, the person who did the artwork for Chrono Trigger and Dragon Quest also happens to be the same guy who did the uh, artwork and like character design. Uh, for uh, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, so yeah, you can like if you look at the character portraits, like, it, and you've seen Dragon Ball Z before, it, it should be like recognizable, like right off the get go. Hmm? I know that suspicious giggle. So, uh, don't mind me, just gonna check out the castle. There's actually quite a few good things we could get in here, too. I like how they're completely okay with doing this, but, uh, yeah. Why not? Let's take advantage of this. Well, I'm, I'm on a diet, so I'll take the refresh salad. Good lord, the NPCs move so fast in this game, man. Like, I swear. <laughs> it's so inhuman. Oh, I see. So they have different effects. Should probably restore HP, too, while we're at it. Give me some power, Stu. And I know we're probably wearing out poor Chrono here from eating too much, but uh, let's see what that other dish does. Hyper Kebab. Sounds like a drug. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh my god. That's... Pretty big. Okay, maybe I should have done that first. <laughs> So I wouldn't have wasted like two minutes of everybody's time. <laughs> so yeah, I love how they're like completely okay with us just like traversing the castle. Even though like the extent of relevance we have to like the people of this place is just being a supposed friend of this said queen. Eh, no thanks. I think I'm fine from eating the stew and the hyper kebab and salad. Thank you very much. Hmm. That does sound pretty fishy. Not worn for words, huh?
Oh, let's stalk him. Why not? That's not what I meant to do. Ugh. Cha cha. And I hold 100G too. Woo. Yet again, cursed by that mysterious energy. What kind of hop was that? Rude. Well, then again, I suppose we're the ones being rude, so whatever. One bronze mill. Okay. I can roll with that. Has a lot of defense on it, too. Holy crap. We're just overpowering our character already. That's one way to raise suspicions. Or raise suspicions, rather. Alright, enough messing around, let's go talk to the coin. Looks like she's been stalking us this whole time because she knows us for some reason. Oh boy, tonics. Can't have enough of those. The coin awaits. Don't mind me, Queen. I'm just gonna take your treasure. Ooh, an ether. Nice. But my specky hairdo, though. Ah, there you are. Please leave us. I need to talk to this individual. Certainly, your highness. Uh, I don't want to invade your personal space. Oh? How'd you know my name? Oh. So it's not something you did on purpose, huh? You just kind of walked into it, I guess. But I just met you. Hmm. I guess she just sort of sensed it, huh? Good. Now come home with me, darn it. <laughs> From which way, how, where, whichever, I don't really know yet. But we'll find a way, I suppose. Huh? Turn apart emotionally, or liter- Oh. Literally. Well, that just happened. What in the world's going on here? I mean, I didn't do it. <laughs> Sorry, bud. That's just a thing with women. <laughs> it's not going to die off anytime soon, trust me. Oh, great. Can't help but feel the world is definitely alive from, just from that alone. It, it definitely tells you that there is world building in this. Because, like, you can tell with the, the gossip being spread around, like, constantly. It's like, yeah, there's definitely, like, a sense of atmosphere in this game, you know? It's a living, breathing world, don't you know? Corona? Oh! But you didn't have the pet in. How'd you get here?
Well, she's gone. We're not gonna explain how, but... So spit it out! Oh. Oh. Well, she could have told us that while we were in private. <laughs> yeah, if you thought the generic NPC sprites were bad in Secret of Mana, good lord, it gets so lazy in this one. So in other words, we messed up the space-time continuum. Kick. I mean, logically speaking, like, it's so obvious, like, that you know how that would work, but like, I like the way the game explains that, actually. But, where there's a will, there's a way. So I guess we're the ones who have to find a real queen, because everybody thinks that the queen is here, apparently. Oh yeah, another thing too, you can actually walk and like read dialogue too, from non-important NPCs. I can't think of many other games that do that, though. So we're just gonna make our way out, as if nothing ever happened. Okay, so, we now have control over Luca. She's not as well leveled as we are, though. And right off the bat, she's got some pretty good MP. But I had mentioned earlier that one of the characters we run into is more magic oriented and that's kind of the case with Luca here because as we can see here she learns flame toss doesn't need many tech points to learn though and it's gonna be like her primary method of attack here soon but once once she learns that though oh boy I have a lot more to talk about as far as tech is concerned because, like, what I was talking about earlier with the Cyclone, oh boy, it, it gets even deeper than that, dude. Like, and that's what I like about this game. Like, it's so simple to pick up, but you can tell, like, there's such a big, like, there's, like, some real depth to, like, the strategy system in this game, you know? That you don't find in many other, like, turn-based RPGs like this. Like, the closest example I can think of that use like a positioning based battle system I believe was Radiant Historia and coincidentally enough that was another like time travel based RPG I wonder if maybe it was influenced by this game in any way Oh wow, that power tab really made the whole difference, huh? Just gonna fight these birds, don't mind me. Wow, that looked kinda off. So, Luca and Marl both have ranged weapons. And the thing with ranged weapons in this game is that, like, you can be away from an enemy and not have to worry about a counterattack, which kind of makes some, like, the safe players, if that makes any sense. Like, they're, like, whenever they attack, they don't have to worry about making contact with the enemy and can shoot from a distance. But the thing is, though, 
they rely on accuracy more than any other party member. So, um, as long as your accuracy is still pretty low as it is right now, uh, chances are you're going to be missing hits quite often. And again, their attack power just isn't as good as the other party members either. Which kind of makes them unique in that sense. So, they man it. They mentioned in the castle earlier that the Chancellor was acting kind of fishy, and he goes to the cathedral to pray. Now, with that kind of lead, it makes me wonder if may perhaps the Chancellor is perhaps up to something? Hmm. Yeah, they did talk about the Queen having a hairpin or so yeah, that's the Queen's, apparently. Yeah, I have a feeling this is where she was taken to. <laughs> but... On the other hand, if enemies are closer to Luca or Marl, basically, um, they'll either bring out their hammer, or like in Marl's case, she'll smack her, smack them with her bow herself. And that's okay, I suppose, because it doesn't really affect the attack power like you think it would, but. On the other hand, you won't be missing any enemies doing that, so... Again, just something to consider if you're looking into this game real deep. I probably should have grinded Luca for a bit so I could have learned, uh... Flamethrower, but uh, I guess we'll worry about that later. Why not? Ah, oh, come on, guys. With that slow spell, you're just delaying the inevitable. Okay, so Luca's got an interesting, like, uh, charm put on her. In the same equipment slot we gave uh, Chrono his headband and the uh, power glove, Luca's got, like, some kind of gear that lets her look at enemy HP. And as, f as far as I know, that's, like, the only way you can, like, analyze enemy HP in this game. Like, you don't even have a scan spell in this. I could be totally wrong, though. Because, like Secret of Mana, it's also been a while since I've last played this as well, so... Uh, as I play this, I feel like certain bits of my memory will start coming back to me. But don't worry! I haven't forgotten as much of this game as I have uh, Secret of Mana, so I don't expect it to look as, like as much of a dumbass like I did in <laughs> Secret of Mana. So, we learned a dual tech. And I'll explain what a dual tech is in the next part, because we're about to end things off here in a moment. Oh! Psh, that scream. What? Of all the things to be saved by, we got saved by a frog who has quite possibly the only Eng old English speaking dialogue in this time period. That makes little sense. And that's something to t blame Ted Woosley for, too, because um, in the DS version, they didn't give uh, Frog a dialect. This was something that they only did in the Super Nintendo version, and seeing this here, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that they changed that. It's, it's just so weird to look at, man. Like, you look at Frog's dialect, which would make sense for this time period, except nobody else t speaks like this whatsoever, so... Um, yeah.
I see that smirk. Eh, why not? He saved us after all. Even though Krona was perfectly capable of saving her himself. But, uh... I'll just leave it up to the plot to kind of, like, let things uh, flow smoothly. Just gonna call him Frog. Why not? <laughs> Frogs with muscles. Okay. The environs. Jesus Christ, Ted Woosley. Just stop. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and rest up at an inn. Please. Huh. Kind of interesting that Luca sleeps without her helmet on. I mean, it makes sense, but just... I don't know. An interesting animation tidbit I like there. Alright, so uh, next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger, we're going to go into the cathedral and see if we can find the queen. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Stop crying, guys. We'll get there in just a moment. And uh, I'll see you guys then.